Hey everyone, welcome to another Lettuce Garden scripting tutorial. In this video, we're gonna go over how to add a shift to sprint feature into your game. And we're also gonna talk about how to make it work on controllers and mobile devices. So an example, I'm walking around here and I hold down shift, I go much faster. And if I go over to a mobile device with a device emulator, you'll see that there is a sprint button that shows up on my screen. And when I hold down the sprint button, I run faster. If you want the assets for this video, check out the link in the description. And if you need help at any point, check out our Discord server and the link for that is also in the description. So the first thing we need to do is create a local script within starter character scripts. And what this is going to do is it's going to add this script to our character when the game starts. So let's add a local script into here and we'll name this shift to sprint. And even before we write this, I just want to show you where this script goes. So if I test out my game, and once my character loads in, I'm going to come up to the Explorer. And you can see that my Shift to Sprint script has been added to my character. So we're going to use this context in order to manipulate our humanoid's walk speed. So within our Shift to Sprint, what we want here is... We want a script that when we hit our left shift button or a button on our phones or a button on an Xbox controller, that it sprints our character, right? So we can use something called context action service for this. So let's import this. So local context action service equals game, get service, context action service. And context action service allows us to bind a function to different types of input across multiple devices. So for example, what we can do here is we can write context action service, bind action, and we have to give it a name. So we can, we can name it sprint. We also have to give it a function to run when this action is fired. So we're gonna call that handler. And the next parameter here is if we want a button to show up on phones or not. And we do want a button on phones, so we want that to be true. And then the rest of these are the other key binds. So we want shift. So we can do enum.keycode.left shift. And for console devices, so an Xbox controller, we want the, um, the left thumbstick, which is the L3 button. So enum.keycode.button L3. So this will set up our sprint for phone users, keyboard users by left sprint and Xbox with button L3. And I know some games like to use F for sprint. So rather than left sprint, you can put in an F there and that will bind it to the F key, but I want it left sprint for this uh, video. And so we defined this handler function here, but it doesn't actually exist. So let's create that handler. So local function handler. And in here, what we get is we get the action name, we get the input state and the input object. Now, in our case, the input object isn't actually needed, so we can actually just remove that. We aren't gonna be using that at all. And the action name is always going to be sprint, so we can kind of just ignore that. Um, if you have multiple actions in your game, this becomes important, so I'll show you the proper way to format this. Um, so what we can say is, if the action name is sprint, then we wanna do stuff. So. If you have multiple actions in your game, they all run the same handler, you can add in the, the common code in here. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna be using Sprint for this one. So now we want to do, if, if I push down on the Sprint button, I want to run faster. But if I lift my finger back up off the key, I want it to stop sprinting. And same with the mobile button. When I'm holding down Sprint, I wanna sprint, but when I lift up my, my thumb, I wanna stop sprinting. So how do we do that? We can do, if input state equal equal enum dot user input state dot begin, then print sprint start else if input state equal equal enum dot user input state dot end, then print sprint stop. Okay, so what's going on here? The input state is something we get when this handler runs. And we want to say, if it's the start of our input, so if we're beginning our input, start the sprint, and at the end of the input, stop the sprint. 
So we actually, we can test this out. Let me just fix this small typo. So let's test this out. So in our game now, if we press down on our left shift button, we'll see a print here. So sprint start. And when I let go of my left sprint, it says sprint stop. Sorry, left shift, it says sprint stop. And now we can actually manipulate the humanoid walk speed. So let's make a new variable up here. Local character equals script.parent. And remember, because the script gets parented to the character when the game runs, script.parent is our character. Within our character, we have a humanoid. So humanoid equals character, wait for child, humanoid. And for sprint start, we can do humanoid.walkspeed equals, I don't know, 25. And when sprint stops, we can go back to the normal walk speed. So humanoid.walkspeed equals 16. So 16 is the default Roblox walk speed. So when we stop our sprint, we want to go back down to 16. And 25 here is what our sprint speed will be. So now if we test out our game. So when I hold down left shift, I run much faster. And when I let go, I'm back down to my normal walking speed. Now, we also talked about making this work on phones. So let me turn on the phone emulator. So in the test tab, we can click on device. And I have it set up right now to be an iPhone X. But if you want to change your device, you can come up here to where it says iPhone X. And you can pick any device you want here. And this runs the emulator within Roblox Studio. Now, I don't, I don't want this to be fit to window. I want this to be... Um, maybe like actual resolution, a bit more realistic size for the phone. And when I test this out, what we'll see is we have our, our normal thumbstick here on the left, our jump button, and then this extra button here. And this is actually the sprint button that's been created. However, it's in a really awkward spot. Like it's kind of overlapping our jump button, right? And we don't want that. So let's actually take a look at what this looks like. So if I come up to my players and go into my player, player GUI, there's this thing called touch GUI. Um, this is this is like the mobile UI. Um, and there's also something called the context action GUI. So in the context action GUI, we have this context button frame, which we can see is this invisible border around our jump button area. And this context action button, which is our sprint button. So while we're here, let's actually find a position for the sprint button that we think would look good. Um, so What's happen what happens if we set it to like the middle? Okay, well that's, maybe that's a good position on the X, but I think it's a bit, you know, it's still blocking our jump button, so. Okay, so if I set it to, if I set it to 0.5 and 0.2, I think this is a pretty, um, pretty good spot for our sprint button. So with that knowledge, we know 0 0.5, 0 0.2 is what we want, and that's on the scale and not the offset. What we can do in our script now is we can come back here and we can do context action service, set position and we want to set the position for sprint so we type in the sprint name and then we give it the position so from scale 0 0.5 0 0.2 so remember our the position that we liked was 0 0.50 0 0.20 0 .20, and udim2 dot from scale is just a shorthand way for us to write that without having to add in all the extra zeros um, and we also want to have the text on our button so context action Sorry, context action service, set title, and then we can say sprint button, and we want it to say sprint. Now, if you have an image for your button, you can also do context action service, um, context action service, set image, and then you can do sprint, and then you know, your image here. Um, now, I don't have an image for this video, but if you did have one, you can use set image. Um, but for this video, we're just going to be using set title. So if I go back into my test mode now, we see now our sprint button is where we want it to be and it says sprint. Now it's, it's pretty hard to test this on PC because you don't have two mouses, right? You can't hold a sprint button and also, um, you know, drag your finger to move your character. So I recommend if you have a phone lying around, publish this to Roblox and then test it on your device there. Um, but yeah, that's how you add in a sprint button or sprint, um, hold on left shift to sprint feature inside Roblox. If you want the assets for this, check out the link in the description. If you need help with this or any other Roblox development issue that you're having, check out our Discord server and we'll be happy to help you out there. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.